As everyone's asking, is the market about to hit bottom? Let's ask our market pros, Melissa Armo, Gary B. Smith, and Larry Shover. Larry, let me start with you. Uh, you know, these kind of markets, uh, selling begets selling, emotions run wild, and nothing mattered. Uh, great earnings, I don't care, stocks going down. Great uh, guidance, I don't care, stocks going down. So we are in the throes of it right now. How do you determine when we're getting near the bottom of it? Well, I think we're almost at the bottom of it, but I think what's more important is that I can rattle off all the reasons why we're, why we're down, all the pessimism, but if you look at the price action, it's all about the Fed, who, while risk assets are falling, while global concerns run apace, they are continuing on a tightening path, and that has spooked markets. Look at the action today, Charles. Fed fund futures, if this was truly recessionary, yields would be down. They were at actually up and we'd see an outperformance in the belly of the curve, that did not occur. What happened today was Fed fund futures actually, yields actually went up ever so slightly and we saw a small outperformance in the long end of the curve. To me, it's all about the Fed and we'll see a lot more of that next week with regard to FOMC minutes and Powell speaking to see if we could calm this market down. Right. Um, we, Yeah, I mean, you realize, we, well, we, uh, Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, we, we do get a press conference from Chairman Powell. I will point out that on October 3rd, uh, he gave a speech that I think triggered a massive sell-off, and the market yes, hasn't recovered. Yes. But, Melissa, I do want to bring you in as well, because there are many things gnawing at this market. And, you know, you can certainly argue that it's oversold, but that doesn't mean it's going to stop going down. No, what happens is, as you said earlier, selling begets selling. So people panic. And every single professional article that I read today was telling people to sell. They're creating panic <laughs> in people. People are saying, get out now or you'll regret it. And, you know, honestly, when I look at the market, we are still holding an uptrend. And there are some people out there that are saying we're in a bearish trend. That's not true. The market, technically speaking, is still holding the uptrend. And unless the Dow gaps down in the pre-market and opens under 23,000 and breaks it and falls off a cliff, we are holding mm -hmm. the uptrend. So I have high hopes for the market to rally in the month of December. Gary B., you always give me high hopes. So uh, lay it on us because uh, a couple million people want to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah I, like I for me, with Melissa, oh, it, the, there, there's there's a couple things going on. Are we still in an uptrend? You know, it always depends on your perspective, Charles. As you know, I think Melissa's looking at a long-term chart or longer-term chart than certainly a daily or even a weekly. And you'd have to say the market is still in a bull market. Does it feel scary? Abs absolutely. I own a lot of these Fang stocks, Amazon, uh, Netflix, and. You know, what is Netflix down like 35% uh, from its highs? And yet if it's you're still up for the Netflix, year, though, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, you're still up for the year, so that's good. But, boy, it feels lousy, you know, from a few weeks ago. A again, it all depends on your perspective. I always try to take a step back and, you know, turn off all the news, all the, you know, stop reading everything and say, huh, Am I still going to use Netflix tonight? Yeah. Did I already use Amazon <laughs> today to start ordering Christmas gifts? Yes. Are those companies most likely going to be around three, five, ten years from now? You'd have to say yes. So you take a step back and say, one, yeah, it's painful. Right. right. You give in to that. But two, you say, I like what I own. So I, I'm bullish. You know, and certainly based on the, the foundation of the economy, you'd have to say things look still pretty good, but scary. Sure. And, and Larry, to that point, uh, you know, investors do retreat, uh, not to companies they think will be around five or 10 years from now, but ones that have been around over 100 years. So Campbell's Soup was a big winner. Johnson & Johnson held up OK. Uh, but, but again, you know, it's, it seems like we're at a place now where uh, it, we're an automatic pilot to the downside. And I, I guess from you, your best advice advice would be what? Well, my best advice was like, get back, I mean, stay in the market. Coast is clear investing never, never works. But that said, there's been a significant chasm between growth and value for over a year and a half. And, and for me, when I start seeing leadership from another group other than Uber Tech, that's when I know the second leg or the third leg of the bull rally is intact. Real quick, Melissa, what would you tell folks? 
Well, a retail approach, if you're an active trader, you're having a great time if you're trading it right because of all yeah. the volatility. And if you're a long-term trader, a long-term investor, the market's, the market's bullish. And I will say this one quick thing. If Trump can pull a rabbit out of a hat, and get this deal done with China between now and January 1st. I'm telling you, the market will take off. And if people that have sold in the last two days or in the last month of October will regret it. All right. That's going to be one big rabbit, but anything is possible. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.